friend Mike, a professional trainer to fell our trees and to show us the two felling techniques mentioned earlier. Thank welcome, you. Mike. Hi, Mike. Welcome. Before Mike starts, we need to bring up one caution. Neither your partner nor any other person should be within a distance of two and a half times the length of the tree you're felling. Always have them keep a safe distance until the tree has settled to the ground. First, Mike's going to show us the conventional technique. Mike's first cut will be a top cut, sawing down at approximately a 45 degree angle to a depth of one fifth to one quarter of the trunk diameter. He will be using his gunning sight shown here, which is at a 45 degree angle to the plane of the bar. Using the sight and aiming at the precise area you want the tree to fall will ultimately give you a hinge perpendicular to your mark that will allow the tree to fall in that direction. After he has carefully made the cut, he will begin to make his bottom cut. This cut is horizontal to the trunk and should meet the upper cut, creating a wedge of wood that you can remove. Next, Mike's going to move to the back side of the tree and make his felling cut. This will be another horizontal cut, approximately one to two inches higher than the point where the two wedge cuts meet. When he finishes with this cut, He'll want to leave a hinge that is a thickness no less than one-tenth the diameter of the tree. Never cut through this hinge or the tree can fall uncontrollably, creating a very dangerous or even fatal situation. To help assure the tree will not settle back in this final cut, and to help begin the process of falling if needed, Mike is going to use some plastic wedges to help things along. Plastic wedges should always be used, not metal. If your chain comes in contact with the plastic, it probably won't dull the chain. Metal definitely will. When he has finished his cut, leaving the hinge with a thickness of approximately one-tenth of the diameter of the trunk, the tree should be falling or on the cusp of falling. If it remains standing at this point, remove your saw, engage the chain brake, turn the saw off, and begin to drive your wedges into the back of the cut with your felling axe, alternating back and forth and waiting a few moments between hits. It should not take long for the tree to begin falling. The tree has begun to fall. Mike will begin to move away from the tree in one of the two pre-planned exits, always being cognizant of the tree's downward motion. As you can see, Mike's accuracy is pretty good. Using the gunning sight on your chainsaw can help you fell a tree in a desired location as well. So, now we're ready to plan the limbing of the tree and eventually bucking it up into firewood length. But before we do, and while we still have Mike here, we're going to drop our second tree so he can show us the other technique, the open face cut. Again, after evaluating the situation, determining where we want to drop the tree and clearing our exit paths, Mike is ready to start. With the open face technique, we will begin with the upper cut, cutting downward at approximately a 50 degree angle to a depth of one fifth to a quarter of the trunk diameter. While doing this, Mike will once again use his gunning sight as before to aim the fall of the tree into the desired area. Once done, the second cut will be from the bottom at approximately a 40 degree angle, meeting the bottom of the top cut exactly. This will create a 90 degree wedge to be removed. Moving to the back, you will make the felling cut exactly the same way as you did on the conventional technique, making a horizontal cut one to two inches above the apex of the open face notch, utilizing wedges to help control the fall, and cutting in leaving no less than one-tenth of the diameter of the tree uncut, creating your hinge. Once the tree begins to fall, engage the chain brake, turn off the engine, and move away from the tree in one of your two pre-planned exit paths. 